overnight life change. It was. I couldn't even believe it. Like, yeah, yeah like one yeah. moment you were saying it's difficult to even afford to go into town. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then the next moment you're like on the a plane. Like the time. Yeah, on first the way to flight. South oh, Africa. That was, that was insane. Hey, did they fly you first <laughs> class? I think I was in the main cabin. I know that. <laughs> okay, it's a little something. <laughs> so what was your initial like reaction? Did you go to Jayburg or Cape Town? I went to Jayburg. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I, yeah. I flew direct. I flew to uh, from from uh, Entebbe to uh, to Ethiopia and from Ethiopia to South Africa. What was your first like initial reaction to South Africa? Like, I felt like I wasn't in Africa. I mean, yeah, <laughs> that's like, fair. You know, yeah. In order to get your mom, because I'm just thinking like visa wise, because you okay. know everyone wishes that they could just like, oh, I'm done with this refugee camp, yeah. like off to Canada. Like, uh, what, what did you? you ha- that, that's why you need money. Yeah, yeah you gotta have money <laughs> yeah. exactly. So like, yeah. what did you have to prove to Canada for them to like let your family go there? So that was that's a really good question. So what happened to me was uh, I was really very lucky enough. I remember in twenty, uh, uh, so twenty nineteen March during uh, the the White House correspondent dinner. So I was invited to the White House course. You're just living. Yeah, yeah. So I was invited. You're living and, then, and then on that table, I had Canadian officials that actually visited for that. Mm. So we started talking, you know what I'm saying? And then I, I got the number. And then I actually got my family a green card mm. when they actually were in a refugee camp, permanent resident. For, for Canada, when wow. they were actually still in a refugee camp. So they didn't even have to do the visa, no, visit, no, no. tourist, straight I called my permanent mom, residency. I called my mom five days before the flight to Canada. She couldn't believe me. I would, I know she was yeah. like probably crying. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. What's, what's going on? I'm like, yeah. The you know. South Sudan and the Kenyans who went, like people, the Sudanese people who went to Kenya, do they uh, kind of tie in with the Maasai tribe or something? Yes, a lot. That's what yeah, I heard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah there's, there's actually a lot because. Yeah, you give Maasai. I know, I know, I know. You definitely give Maasai. <laughs> because, yeah, actually, when you look at actually Kenya itself, like most, when you go to the originality, like the Bantu people and then the Luo, most of them originated from, uh, from Sudan. So like we have the same kind of like yeah. sometimes we actually almost speak the same language. Yeah. Yeah, I can listen to them. I they will say something and say something. Yeah. Do you know Luganda? A little bit of it. A little. Yeah, not a lot. I will- Guys, it has been a while, but I'm here to make the wow worth it. I have a gem with us today, um, someone I'm really excited to introduce you guys to. I met you through Instagram. Yeah, through Instagram. Yeah, yeah so I was like chilling at Swahili Village and like came across his page on the Swahili Village story and then like looked at him and was like, wow, this is like a really interesting guy. So of course I had to like pull up vibe and then i was like i need you on my channel you guys so i will let him introduce himself and then we're gonna dive in wow this is uh (laughs) this is really amazing uh uh you know uh when i first you know met you and we had a conversation i really enjoyed it especially like um with your experience in africa yeah Uh, it's, it's not a lot of people that you know go back you know and just enjoy you know the moment and the people yeah, and that's really what uh, that really what attracted me a lot to to be able to like you know have the conversation with you and see like you know where I come from. So anyway, I'm I'm excited. Uh, my name is Luol Mayen, and um, what does um, that mean? What does that name mean? Because I know a lot of African <laughs> names have meaning. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so so I'm uh, I'm from South Sudan, and a lot of African names, of course, have a lot of meaning. You know, so yeah. Luol is something that is more like something special. Like mm. it's it's a color of something something like it's red something like it's just a special so Luol Luol yeah so and 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 every time like I hear people calling me Luol I feel so good about it Luol yeah Luol, Luol, yeah a lot of people who come from Africa to like yeah. Western countries mm. adopt like English names yeah 
and, and I mean, and because <laughs> like even sometimes, okay, the most funniest thing is this: like I have about like three names or four names, and uh, so I have a given name. So my given name is Michael, and I don't use it a lot. Michael is my given, like, given name. So who but, gave it to you? Uh, my parents. So it's okay. like it's like a Christian name, you know. So okay. I gave them to you. So my first name is Luan, and then my my son name in Africa is is Mayem. Mayem. Yeah, Mayem. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. But anyway, yeah, um, uh, or yeah, I'm an entrepreneur, actually. And a lot of people say, oh, what do you do as an entrepreneur? So I love to like, um, right now I'm the CEO of Jimmy Game. So it's a video game company. Okay. And I am also the founder of uh, Luan Man Foundation. So okay. I can well, you're there. skipping ahead. I was going to say, yeah. hold up, now, hold up, now. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you, a lot of the articles that I Googled about you, yeah. because y'all know I'm working on doing and research before. So I was like, let me see what this guy's about. So yeah. you hit your Wikipedia and it's like video game editor, mm. video game designer, um, refugee, refugee, refugee. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that is tagged all over most articles. Where did this all start? So you are Sudanese, you're South Sudanese, no. mm-hmm. but many of the articles actually refer to you as Ugandan. Yeah, Ugandan, exactly. Can you give us like how did you end up from South Sudan to Uganda? Well, yeah, that's a very good uh, that's a very good question actually. So uh, a lot of people sometimes ask me like, are you are you from South Sudan? Are you do you call yourself a Ugandan? You know, I've lived in a, in, a, in Uganda for about twenty four years. You were born in Uganda. I was born between uh, South Sudan and Uganda. So when a lot of people, I, if I go back, a lot of people think like. South Sudan is different, you know, we, we are a different country, but at the time, by the time my parents had to like flee the country because of the war. So in 1992, there was a civil war that has been going on for, for decades. It's still Sudan. going on right now. And it's still going on right now. It's I'm asking. Better. Yeah. yeah. Right now it's better. It's not because we've got our own uh, country now. So it's okay. a different country now. But So back then, mm-hmm. just for like mm-hmm. black Americans who don't know or anyone watching this who doesn't know, because I do not know much about the civil war in Sudan. Yeah. Sudan used to be just one, yeah. mm-hmm. but the civil war split it up to where there's now North Sudan and South yes, Sudan, South Sudan. Yes. and these are recognized countries, Yes, yeah. and that caused you to have to flee towards the Ugandan border yeah. yes. to a refugee camp. Was the refugee camp literally on the line between um, Sudan and Uganda, or was it recognized as being in one of the countries? Yeah, so... It, it is in Uganda, so the refugees, so a lot of South Sudanese, when, during the civil war, they had to flee and find a place of refuge. Mm. So my family had to actually walk 250 miles to find, to go to Uganda. Wow. You know, because then, you know, they, they, it was it was a crazy, it was, just, it was just a crazy moment, you know, especially for my mom, my dad, my sibling, I lost two of my sisters on the way because of the war. They couldn't have food, they couldn't have a lot of things in life. So, so on the uh, like on that two hundred and fifty mile journey, yeah. you lost sisters. Yes. How old were they? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, they were like maybe uh, nine, eight mm-hmm. around there. So they yeah. didn't have a lot of like resources. And then uh, on the way, as my family was actually fleeing to find a place of refuge, I was born on the way. And then I grew up in Uganda in a refugee. Country. Your mom was pregnant with you at the time. Yes, at the time. Oh my god. And gosh. then as, as they, oh. before they reached uh, Uganda, I was born on the way, on uh, as she was fleeing the war. So and, she gave birth on the way yeah, yeah. after, then, like, losing two kids on the way. Yeah. And then she arrives to the camp with to you. To the camp. And then... Uh, so technically, you were born in Sudan. Yes. Technically, yes. Technically. Yes, technically. Yes, yes. But you, as soon as you were a baby, and, yeah. like, your first home was, was in Uganda. Uganda. Yes. That was it. Yeah. Um, so I have questions about that, because I know, like, when I was watching, like, um, a lot of... They have a lot of movies on Rwanda. Oh, okay, yeah. But you don't really see a lot of stuff on, like, Sudan or, like other civil wars there's not like hollywood productions Mm -hmm. so you know with like the tribalism and the civil war that was taking place in uganda Mm -hmm. it was actually like really dangerous for other countries to intervene and like help the tribes right Mm -hmm. was that that way in uganda like when you guys got there were was your mom from what she's told you was it like frightening for her being there still or was it like totally protected like yeah, I think that's a really good question that a lot of people haven't asked me in a, in a while. I think that, you know, when when my family flees South Sudan, right, they are, the most important thing that it was like a journey of life and death, right? You either remain in South Sudan or you, you just flee and try to fight for your life. So, and the good thing about it was um, 
the Ugandan government was able to accept refugees, right? Okay. So, uh, so they were able. That's where, like, you know, the UNHCR come in, the the the, uh, the, the United Nations comes in and start yeah. giving us like food, like everything, assistance, like anything that can help us. So, and then the problem about it, to answer your question, is that even Uganda itself, by the time they accept refugees to come, right, it wasn't doing well. So they even have mm-hmm. their own problem that were actually yeah. affecting refugees themselves. For example, uh, when we, when we, um, when my family was living in a refugee camp, the northern Uganda itself was actually suffering from uh, from a rebel leader who is actually still alive right now. Yeah, uh, the guy who won't leave the president. Yeah, you know, so they, who was still there. Like uh, we are, like Joseph Kony, you know, in northern Uganda, he was killing his own people, and and at the end of the day. It wasn't just killing Ugandan, it was also affecting refugees themselves. Mm. So the same problem that we find in Uganda can also affect us as refugees. Yeah. So it's like it's the same thing. But the 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 the, 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 the most part of about it, the most important thing about it was we wanted to survive. Yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't affecting us. Like it, we don't mind because like yeah. that, this is like this have. drama isn't yeah, too much yeah, compared exactly. to like what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. did you guys have to leave like family members behind, or did like your family unit as a whole pretty much flee to the camp together? Yeah, everybody. No, actually, my dad had to actually use a different route because a way of protecting us. So he had to like leave the children with with, with my mother, and then he had to like use a different way to survive himself. Because even during the war, if if a woman is fine with with a man working together and fleeing together, they will kill all of them. Oh my but God. you know, but if if they see a woman and then they can you you you, you fell into ambush, sometimes they can mm. have like a little bit of empathy and that's maybe, smart. You know, yeah. so so my dad had to like just you know use his own way and then uh to, and then uh and I remember my even my um my auntie like everybody had to like it took actually from the day they flew uh they they, they fled the country it took my mom to reunite with her sister. 40 years. Oh my god! And that was in 2019. They didn't see each other. That's what I was going to ask you. Like, is there like a, because there's obviously, it's almost like the Underground Railroad. Have you heard of the Underground Railroad in America where the slaves were like free to the north, you know, and people are just like, go north, like, go north. Was there like a specific like map almost for like, how did your mom know like, this is where we're going to get to Uganda. The camp will be here. Like, how do people know that? <laughs> that's a really good question. I think no, there was no, there was no map. They were just trying, and that's why, like, because it's we had about, uh, let me say, we had about over two point five million refugees fleeing. So you probably just, you see, just see the just traffic. See. Yeah, the, traffic, the rest, the rest in up mm. going to Kenya, the rest in and up in Uganda. It's like it's it's just like you just follow where the people are going. Where people are, or yeah. you 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 also like. I think people are so smart when yeah. they come to war to figure out like what's the best. The intuition, way yeah, which exactly. way it looks right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. 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 Um, how was it like what are your earliest memories growing up on a refugee camp? Like, did you ever feel like, hmm, this is a refugee camp? Or like, was it like home? Do you get what I'm saying? Because sometimes even like, you know, kids who grow up in poverty, you mm-hmm. don't really realize you grew up in poverty until people tell you. Mm-hmm. Like, did you ever grow up feeling like this is off? Like something feels weird about this. If you were born essentially there, from like yeah, and and that's the problem. A lot of people that think that you know a refugee camp is definitely it's mm-hmm. not. It's a home. Yeah, you know a lot of people think that we we go there five years, two years. People were born there. People were raised up there. People like they were born there and they're like forty now. People are like fifty now. You know, still so there. It's still there, right? Okay. Uh, it, it's a home. So I think to us. We felt good because it's like it's it's a survival moment to find a place of refuge where you wake up in the morning and at least see peace. Yeah, right. And and that's actually at the end of the day that's actually helped me a lot to be where I am today because I did not feel that I was lacking anything. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. So yeah. when you yeah. say like refugee camp, yeah. like yeah. I'm thinking like a tent, a fire, yeah. some more, like like a camp, but they had like homes. Like real, like can you just kind of describe like was it like neighborhoods? Like was it large? Was it small? Like yeah, and, and, and schools, think, grocery yeah. store, <laughs> like kind of. Let's so yeah. let's start off. I'll bring yeah. the questions into yeah. small. Yeah. Was it like a home given straight to you guys, or did you share with others? 
Yeah, that's actually a very good question that a lot of people don't ask. Like when you think about a refugee camp, it's exactly a camp, right? So when refugees flee their country, right? So what happened is that the whole technical part of it is that the, the country and the government there would allocate a place where they can resettle, right? Mm -hmm. They can say, okay, you, you, you're going to, you're going to stay, settle somewhere in, in, for example, I don't know what's the best way to say it. That place has never been settled before. It's like a bush. It's like a, yeah. all the trees. And then from there, you can put a tent. From there, you can start cleaning it up. From there, you turn into a home. From there, you become like So they kind of give you like, they give you allotted land. And that land, exactly. And, and then you, you can, do what yeah, you want with it. it. Exactly. Okay. You can like, you know, grow crops. You can like keep animals. You can like, but it's literally the bush. Okay. You have to clean it up yourself. And That's then, not a bad deal, <laughs> though, you know? I mean, yeah, it's not. I don't think. Yeah. Um, do they yeah. ever, so when you were growing up, your mom eventually, how did your dad meet you guys? Yeah, so so when uh, when my family uh, resettled in Uganda, there's a big camp where everybody settled together. And then after that, my dad was in another in another camp. And then he was able to find my mom after that. Then we settled together in Uganda. What is the process of finding somebody? It's a lot. A lot. Yeah, you have to like do a lot of coordination. Uh, the UN sometimes, like the United Nations, come and like help and see like, hey, are you missing somebody? Like a couple of home and then. Oh, okay. Know, so they'll ask like, yeah, what's, yeah, what's your yeah, name? Are you looking for somebody? somebody and they you know, communicate. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah. So at that point, since your mom was pregnant on the way, you yeah. had not met your dad. Not yet. Yeah. And so yeah. how old? Uh, maybe two. I don't know. Oh, that's not bad. That's yeah, not too long. Yeah, it's not too long. Oh, it's not yeah, like one of those like yeah, yeah. thirty years. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, no, so no, was, yeah, because they were like on the same run. Okay, so, they were in the yeah. same area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, so your dad came, mm -hmm. and you guys eventually like built a home. Yeah, we, we started building a home. We started like living in tents, and then uh, and then it became home for us. It became like an amazing space for us. Yeah. yeah so yeah. you are one out of seven. Yes. And that includes the two who passed on the way. Yes. yes yeah. Um. So you grew up with three. Am I doing the math right? One. No. Four. four. Yeah. Um. Where are you in that mix? Did your mom have more kids at the camp? Yes. Uh. Two of my brothers. So okay. two of my brothers, and then there were four of my sisters, and then two of us, and then I have two right now. Okay. And then yeah, two of my brothers uh, grew up together with me in the, in the camp. So technically, yeah. is their they passport Ugandan? Mm -hmm. Is your passport Ugandan or no, Sudanese? No, nope. you're Sudanese. Sudanese. Yes. Okay. Okay. So they're Ugandan citizens, yeah. and then your mom. Yeah. So the thing, the whole idea is like, even when when you become a refugee, it doesn't matter when you're born there. It it depends on where you come from. So there's a, there's a little bit of uh, a mindset uh, of South Sudanese. It doesn't matter whether you're born there or not, as long as your dad is from South Sudan or the money. You're Sudanese. <laughs> so even if they have like a Ugandan yeah, passport, passport, they're like, like they wouldn't even get it. They, yeah. They say, they say it's, I get what you're saying. I hear like yeah. Well, but yeah, yeah. So, but honestly, I would, I would have been a Ugandan. Yeah, because I've lived there. Technically, all yeah. yeah, technically you're Ugandan. Yeah, yeah. So like you, they had schools and everything, yeah. just normal. You grow uh, up. So in a refugee camp, they didn't have school. So we would like sometimes like we would learn Dinka language. We would like start. We have people that are school drop out. Then we start teaching them maybe A B C D to start English. But it was so hard. We didn't have like. And you need to have a lot of resources to go to the city or town for you to study, but a lot of refugees do not have that. So we just stayed in refugee camp. Stay in your community and so on, yeah. What are your earliest memories of like being educated? Like who wow. taught you like how to read and like Yeah, there was yeah, I would say uh let me say, let me say my mom. So my mom I remember like she would go and get for me some books, like, you know, some book that I can read stories and stuff like that. Uh, that's my early memory. But other than that, I did not have like a formal education, like where because we didn't have actually schools in the yeah. refugee camp. So, but I had an idea of like I wanted to do well. I think I always have that in me. Like I always yeah, that to, hustler you know, spirit. Yeah, it's always yeah. There. <laughs> That's a vibe. <laughs> um, so like when I was reading the articles, it's like, yeah. oh my god, he got his first computer when he yeah. was eight, mm -hmm. I think, right? Yeah. Like what made you like mom, I want a computer? So actually that's like that's actually my favorite uh part of the story, actually. You know, uh Tell us. yeah, I think what made me get a computer was when I grew up in a refugee camp, we did not have access to like television, anything, anything at all, right? And 
So when I was a kid, I love playing soccer. We love, that's the only thing we do every time. You wake up in the morning, play soccer. Play soccer. Every day, like you can actually- you, You're Americanized, <laughs> you're saying soccer. It's supposed oh, okay, to yeah, be yeah, football. Yeah, football. Football. Yeah, football. Yeah, you've been in America for too long. <laughs> so yeah, we love, we, we love football so, so much in a way that you can actually tell your mom and say that, I'm not gonna eat today, but I'm gonna play football. Yeah, I'm busy. You know, I'm, 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 I'm playing uh, football every time. So, so by that time, I felt like so it was so hard sometimes because I was, I was, I was just born, and then I, I was not strong enough. So in a way that when I go to play f- football, right, every time uh, my friend would sometimes say, "Hey, you're not playing. This is you're not gonna play." Mm, and, yeah. yeah, like something like that. And I'm like, because you're, you're scared, yeah, yeah, right? Like something like that. <laughs> going on. So every the. the and I wouldn't do anything. Yeah. So what I would do was I'm like, okay, fine, play your uh, play your game, but I'm gonna turn that into something mm. in a way that I'm gonna own something. So at night, what I would do is I would create cartoons, right? I would start creating cartoons, putting together, and then I would have a, I would host a whole show at my place. Okay. From eight to ten. You would eight. wait. You're drawing cartoons. Yeah, I, I'm drawing cartoons. I'm cutting them, and I'm actually putting a whole like a movie at night. Dang. And yeah, and everybody we have like in the, like the biggest entertainment of all time in the refugee camp. We have over hundred people coming. Wow. And sitting at home, and then the kids that actually told me not to play football, so they come. No, they come. No, they yeah, didn't come. They, they, yeah, when they come, I I tell them no. Uh, you're not invited. You're not invited. Time. You know, so like I start having like those creativity, and then I keep pushing. And then my mom like, wow, like like everybody loved it. So you're yeah. saying when you were creating cartoons, they yeah. were drawings. Yeah, they were drawing. Oh, so like the way people look at newspapers yeah. and the cartoons, like, ah! It's something like that. But I would actually make, uh, sometimes they would actually have motion. I would play them. Wow. Yeah, like I, I used to have, I was, I used like to Like theater plays. Yeah, theater, theater plays. Like, wow, like, yeah, okay, you're a like, producer. Yeah, right? <laughs> so I used to do that a lot. And then that was another way of like, wow, like I, I became so creative. And then that evolved a lot about my mom trusting me and saying that I can do anything, anything that I want. Yeah, so, so she was like, he has the vision, yeah, the yeah, direction, the, the self motivation. Yeah, yeah. yeah so everything. Yeah. Uh, and everything I was doing was so creative. Everybody like in a refugee camp, everybody would talk about it. Oh, the love! I cannot wait. Like when it's ready. You know, Where did that like, love for cartoons come from? Like, did you always like to draw? Or like... I, I used to like to draw, and I just I I think I used to love to do creative a lot. I, okay. I love to create. Like I remember, like the first movie when I when I when I saw a movie for for the first time. I would recite a whole movie, mm. like I would know every detail. So in a way that I can actually cr- recreate that movie into a whole cartoon and, and wow. make all the, uh, all the play, right? So when I saw a computer for the first time, I was like, wow. Like, Where did you see it? Uh, it was during a refugee registration. So we didn't have, because they were using, we were using computer to register refugees. You know, new okay. family members, like new registration, they do that like, Every two years or four. Okay, so yeah. before they were using paper, yeah, and they had like transferred. Yeah, you're yeah. like, wow, what uh, is no, that? Yeah, so I'm like, what is that? What my is mom. That? Yeah. <laughs> and then my mom was like, hey, this is that's nice. a computer. Yeah. Like, How did you even know? Because she never been to school. She doesn't speak English. So like, that's a computer, you know. So from that time, I'm like, I told myself, I'm like, uh, I want to use it one day. Yeah. So that was it. And then after a couple of years, I came to my mother. I'm like, hey, you know. I want to buy a computer and she was like, what? Like, where are you gonna what are you gonna do with it? There's no yeah. money, there's no where are you gonna charge it? Where are you gonna Yeah, that requires electricity, electricity. And no electricity. We don't yeah. have nothing. Wi Fi. Yeah. But I think because she was a mother to me, she didn't she she didn't like scares me. She yeah. just kept quiet for three years looking for three hundred dollars and then mm. she bought me my first computer right there. Moms are like the Yeah, best. that's amazing, right? I think and that was like when I got my first computer, that was the first time I actually thought I was like were your siblings like, uh, what are you getting me? If you got him a computer, was it like a family computer or was it for you? It was for me. So the, not your siblings are mature because no. me and my siblings would have yeah. been like, um, excuse me? Like, yeah. what are you going to get yeah. from me I if think, you got a little computer? Yeah. I think that was, that was a moment where I felt like I shouldn't have asked for it. No, you should have. No, I, should have. I, felt, I felt that way. I was like, and that, so when I asked myself, I was like, yeah, like now my mom worked so hard to get for me my first computer. Yeah. You know, now I have my siblings, right? If I don't use it next time, they're going to ask mom and say, hey, so you got him. Yeah. You know, and, and then my mom is going to be like, hey, I bought him a computer. He didn't use it. Yeah. You true. know, so I was in a space whereby, wow, like, 
was in like, Haiti. what was your mom doing to earn money? So at this point, what were your parents doing to she earn money on the refugee camp? Uh, she was a seamstress. She would okay. like, you know, like, she would like put together clothes when you tell them and then give them like one dollar or so. Then okay. Money like that. And what about your dad? No work. Okay. Yeah, so just making it. Yeah, just meat. like, yeah, yeah, just like, yeah. At refugee camps, do they give out food to people? Yes, yes, yeah. That's that's how people survive. So they give us food, they give us, I think, mostly food. And then most what of the were time, some of the foods, if you remember? Because honestly, I do not like Ugandan food. <laughs> <laughs> it is so, like, okay, okay. first of all, Ugandan food is the best of all time. I it's love it. not. I love no, it. We can lie, but. Nah, it's actually good. Have you had, like, Chikamundo? Nah. Have you had like uh it's like this I'm not a big fan of Ugandan food. I actually love it. This is it's, yeah, have you had chicken mando, have you had like <laughs> they have really good food. I'm not a pumpkin eater. I feel like there's a lot of like yeah, starchy lot. Yeah, yeah, vegetables. I think that's a lot, yeah. I think yeah, like, like yeah. and then the seasoning is just not like all the way there. So you're getting food or Kenyan food? What do you say? Kenyan food. Oh Kenyan food all the way. Really? Oh, over <laughs> Ugandan food. Yeah. Better. Yeah, Machoma at least has a little something. A we little. had we had actually better than Machoma. We got it. And the beer. I mean, the so. only thing yeah. Kenyan beer is by far better than <laughs> Ugandan beer. Um the only thing yeah. that Kenyan food, I would say, the only thing Ugandan food has mm. bought to Kenya mm. that I appreciate is the Rolex. Yeah, that's the Chicomando. The Rolex is the best. I love okay, it. that's what the that Rolex. is. Yeah, I was yeah, like, I don't right. know what that is. <laughs> The Rolex is the best. That's all that Uganda really has to offer yeah. over Kenya, I think. Like, yeah. Ugandan food is very simplistic. Very, it's very simple. And that's, that's, that's a good thing about it. <laughs> I need some, like, flavor. Yeah. Like, I've yeah. never had Sudanese food. So, we actually, let me tell you, like, Sudanese food, it, it's, it's, it's really sad that we don't have a lot of Sudanese restaurant in the, in the diaspora. I was just going to say that. There's yeah, no, yeah. I've never, ever seen, like, a Sudanese restaurant. That's why I um, got my own chef. I haven't actually had, so, during the pandemic, I used not to cook, you know? So, it's a Sudanese okay. thing, man, supposed to cook. Men are supposed to cook? Men are supposed to cook. Uh, not supposed. Okay, oh, yeah, not supposed to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I yeah, thought yeah, you yeah. said we're no, supposed no, to cook. No, 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 no. <laughs> but then I, so, when my family moved to Canada, I haven't had it authentic. Sasha needs food because mm. my mom needs to cook it, you know. So, and then during the pandemic, I'm like, no, I'm just gonna start learning, you know, how to cook. So, mm. now I'm actually one of the best chefs. I, really? I cook my own Sudanese food. I'm uh, waiting. We're gonna try one day. <laughs> Surprise so, me. So, we have, yeah, so we have, uh, we have uh, something called Kisra. So, Kisra is like, um, it's like Angela, like the Ethiopian. And just like with the bread, oh, the spongy yeah, bread, yeah, the spongy. But ours is so light, so actually, sometimes we call okay. it pepper food, so it's like pepper food, it's more like it's very light, okay. And then we have uh, Morokia, so it's something like a green, you can only find Morokia in in Sudan, South Sudan, and Egypt, mm. those are yeah, that you cannot find in nowhere and any, anywhere. So it's like a very, mm. yeah, it's a very traditional food for us. So, but anyway, going back to Uganda, so. Uh, so when we grew, when, when I grew up in a refugee camp, we didn't have like access to like go to towns, you know, like it was so expensive for us. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did they provide like mainly Ugandan type of foods for you guys? That's what we were talking about. So yes. like <laughs> when you're getting the food from people, was it like mainly Ugandan or like American or like? No, no, all, all they can provide for us, especially with uh, the United Nations High Commission for Refugees and then the World Food Program will actually give us the food. The only thing they can is like maybe cornbread, you know, and then and then the oil and then the salt and then the sugar, like all those processed like, foods. Yeah, yeah, like all those things. And then from there you can figure out how to okay. maybe yeah, yeah. So yeah. Maybe and then beans. like really growing food off the land. Yeah, and then from the rest you can yeah. like grow food. You so can was it hard up. for your mom to like cook these traditional Sudanese dishes without like being in Sudan? Yeah, it was actually it was actually not that hard because okay. yeah, so because like most of us were able to like maybe within the land they give us so they, they give us a plot of land that's where you can like have your own garden so she mm-hmm. can be able to grow her own onion you know tomatoes uh, you know um, maybe garlic. She, she what about that um, plant that you said was just only in Sudan? Like, and yes, Asia. and then we also grow it. Malachia. You grew it. Yeah, you grow it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We we have those seeds, and then we can oh, like, grow them. You know? So okay. it takes a little bit of time, but like pepper, we mm-hmm. all have a garden to grow, and that's what we do every time, right? From um, from uh, let me think about from April to like June, uh, April to June. That's like three months around. Yeah, that. that's like a. a 
a, a growing season where you can now grow, you know, like maybe onion and everything. But during the summer, which is like from uh, from August to like December, you don't grow anything. Yeah. So you have to like keep, you have to plan ahead of uh, what you can have to do. And dry it. And, and dry it. And, and so um, did you eat a lot of meat? Yes, a lot of meat every time. Yeah. Yeah, we were like meat, like I think so, because like when you look at South Sudan, we are more like a, like, you think about maybe Montana, you know, something like we're more like a keto keepers, like we are like livestock and stuff mm. like that. So it's so on meat is something. The South like, Sudan and the Kenyans who went, like people, the Sudanese people who went to Kenya, do they uh, kind of tie in with the Maasai tribe or something? Yes, a lot. That's what yeah, I heard. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so, yeah there's, there's actually a lot because. Yeah, you give Maasai. I know, I know. You definitely give Maasai. <laughs> Because, yeah, actually, when you look at actually Kenya itself, like most when you go to the originality, like the Bantu people and then the Luo, most of them originated from uh, from Sudan. So, like, we have the same kind of like, yeah. sometimes we actually almost speak the same language. Yeah. Yeah, I can listen to them. Like, they will say something and step from, yeah, yeah. Do you know Luganda? A little bit of it. A little. Yeah, not a lot. I wasn't there. But my brother is actually, my younger brother is very good at uh, Luganda. Yeah, because he was so young. So, he was able to like learn a lot. Okay, yeah. so you got your first computer. Yeah. What was the first thing you did with it? Wow, what is the first thing I did with it? I actually started playing music and <laughs> you know how to use it. Who were you listening to at the time? Oh, wow, that's actually a good question. Uh, like was, Michael Jackson? No, I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't like, uh, so actually the, the first music, I don't know, I in Africa, like, so when I grew up, uh, so when we grew up, the kind of music we actually knew was maybe, I'm, I'm not going to be biased, but I would say maybe a bit Michael Jackson. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's yeah, like worldwide. Yeah, vibes, worldwide. You know? I would say 50 Cent was really... In impressive. the club. Yeah, I think 50 Cent in the rap. You can find me in the club. Yeah, you know what I'm <laughs> I would say 50 Cent. I would say Ja Rule. I would say, yeah. So all those guys were, were, were and then a little bit of Drake. Maybe Drake, yeah, that seems kind of early. Yeah, that's actually early. That's what I'm saying. I was gonna say, because if you got your computer when you were eight, that is no, 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 2001. That's, that's not when I was eight, I was like 17. Oh, dang, By yeah, no, back, listen, oh, yeah. oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. So I, was like, I don't know why like, I read it was eight, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. So, yeah, okay, so you yeah. were 17, yeah, yeah, around there. Jeez Louise, so what did you do with that? Ah, I just like start learning how to use it and then uh, then walk every day three hours to go to charge it. It was a lot of work. You had to walk three hours to charge it. Yeah. So it was a laptop. It was a laptop. Yeah. Actually, I have it right there. Wow. <laughs> that is so cute. Uh, Stop. Yeah. So who uh, taught you how to start editing videos? Did you do that after you left the refugee camp or while you were there? While I was in the refugee camp, I taught myself. I started watching uh, tutorials on uh, how to make video games. And then I just, you know, taught myself. And, on YouTube? Uh, on YouTube a lot. But most of the time, we're like, the way the videos that I actually learned from it were not directly from YouTube. They're like undownloaded one because I didn't have access to internet. So I would just watch like the downloaded video. So sometimes we work and find the internet, then download them, come back home, and then watch them. Yeah, my visit so I can understand how to like program. It was a lot. What were like some websites that you were on at the time? Like, were you like on like MySpace or like no, no, Facebook? No, 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 no. I think I was on Facebook a lot. You were on Facebook? Yeah, I was on Facebook a lot. I was on um, YouTube, uh, Facebook, what other thing? That time, no, not Twitter, actually. <laughs> was internet access super expensive? It was too expensive to have access to. But yeah. sometimes you wouldn't, because even the phone that you have is hard. It's hard. So yeah, I was like the only person in a whole refugee camp that had a computer. Were you ever afraid of it being stolen? Yes. And that was my biggest fear of every time. Yeah. yeah, like um, everyone know you had a laptop, so they're like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they start calling me a black flag guy because I always sleep like, on the laptop. <laughs> 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 you know, so, but, but I think when I start like learning programming, right, I think that most of my, of where I am today, I will give it to credit, I will give it back to like the refugees because like they were so excited. Mm -hmm. Every time I do something, supporting they, you, they were like, "Oh wow, how do you do this?" Even for me to design a simple uh, logo from from like publisher or something like that, right? Like, yeah, yeah, like they were like, "Oh so wow." So they that's they didn't want to be like enemies of progress, like they no, wanted. No, they were so yeah, excited. Like, yeah, oh, wow, like, like show us more. And then and then that that kept me going. Okay. Like, yeah. Like yeah, even when I yeah, even when I first made my first uh, video game, right? It was like less than ten megapixels. So like it's like very like small game. Yeah. Right? 
and it was I was good. Like uh, I was not trying to do something big or something like that, and everybody supported it. And then that's when it went viral. Did you let people like play it? Yeah, I would send it out, and that's why I made it like so live, because I was I couldn't have access to like maybe Google Play, mm. so I would just send it to them via Bluetooth. Did you let? Did you have a lot of people like? Can I use your computer? It's a lot. It's a lot. But I was very disciplined with that. I'm like, yeah, no, no, no <laughs> sorry, friend. So, no, 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 no. <laughs> I love that. So, at what point, like, did your parents kind of raise you, like, okay, one day you're gonna get out of this refugee camp and move to London or like move here? Like, what area did you kind of like grow up wanting to move to? Uh, living in a refugee camp for the rest of my life. No, I'm saying you yeah, wanted yeah, to yeah, live yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, that was my that was my mindset. That, that, really? That, 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 yeah, I didn't, I didn't ever even, I didn't ever thought that that is something more than that. Really? Yeah. Why? Uh, cause I, cause I felt like that's 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 the that's way home. it's gonna be. That's home, you know. And and I think that's that's a problem with a lot of people. Sometimes like you, you you struggle to achieve something that is not because you cannot achieve it, but sometimes you have to like give yourself a space that oh, this is what I am. So when you do it, you kind of box yourself. You box in it. Yeah, it's it's like okay. First of all, like now we have a conversation here in the room, right? And we don't know what is happening outside. Yeah. Right. Nice. So, so, yeah. but if you can use what is inside here, it's gonna help you open up what outside. you can see outside. Right. Yeah. So that and that's and and that's how like when I was in the refugee camp, I was like, yeah, I gotta be content. You know, I gotta be happy. It was not a choice for my parents to become refugees. Right. Yeah. So anything that happened after this, I'm happy with it. Or if it doesn't, this is my life, so I can make it better. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So like, there was no way. Even when I started making my company, when I started making my video game, I did not think about the business perspective of it. You're just doing it as a I form just, of like enjoyment. Okay, what can I do in a refugee camp so we can play? Yeah, you know, so we can have fun. So That's we can, so you know what I'm saying? So you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Something like then the rest is history, right? So break this down for me. Yeah. You made the game while yeah. you were there, and yeah. then it went viral. Yep. Yeah. The game went viral. Yep. Mm-hmm. What was the it was Salam? Salam, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. I did my research, my yeah, research. Yeah, yeah. So, what was the purpose of Salam? Like, what's the objective? Like Call of Duty, you're like, yeah. Like, no, what right. is Salam? <laughs> so I think yeah. So I think the first time I actually like. So I remember one day I went to an internet cafe, right? And I was just like, you know, downloading you know uh, videos uh, for me to learn, right? And then I came back home. And I opened my computer, and the first thing I saw was an icon of GTA Vice City on my computer. So I opened it, then I opened it, and I'm like, wow. Oh my God, I love Grand Theft Auto Vice City. <laughs> right? Yeah, that, that was, was one of the few games, games that I used. That yeah. was the first ever game I've ever seen. Wow. So I, I opened it, and then the most important Grand Theft Auto, you know, Grand Theft Auto. And then I'm like, wow. I never thought that actually video game are created by people, but they just fall from heaven. Because oh, yeah, yeah, I have yeah. no idea how, how do people create games and yeah. stuff. So when when I when I saw Grand Theft Auto, I was like, wow, what is this? So I started like it took me a few days trying to like drive around, start playing, and then it hit me. I'm like, wow, like this is a very good game. The like, game are very powerful, mm-hmm. right? I'm like, if they're powerful, I, I and then I was like, oh, there could be amazing medium that we can use to tell stories. Yeah, Grand Theft Auto is so toxic. Though. Yeah, You're like killing like, prostitutes yeah, and stuff like that. Like, so then I thought about like, okay. How about if I make a game like this and and, and I can help kids in the refugee can play it and and then mm. here's resolution the thing that matters to them yeah you know like I'll, 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 so that moment kind of changed my perspective I'm like okay now what is next I need to know how to program I need to know how to like a lot make of things it. You know, make it and yeah so on. about how long was that process uh that's actually a really great question uh, it took me about maybe seven months to make my first game. Mm. Okay. Because I think, but I put a lot of time in it. So out of those seven months, could be about like, maybe three years for somebody. Yeah, you're just a hard worker. Yeah, I was just like every day. Did like, you working. have someone who you were like rolling ideas off of or like no, no. collaborating with? No. Not at all. Apart from when my game went viral, then I went to South Africa, and then I started like collaborating with different like businesses and just. Like, so you, you know, uploaded the game to yeah. where it's downloadable for others, and mm-hmm. it went viral. What do you think made it go viral? What, was it with, like the traction in the refugee camp, and then they're sending it to people who are sending the people, or like what platform did you use for it to like go viral? On? Yeah, th- and that's actually that's actually what makes it very interesting because like when when I when I made my first game, right? 
So I start sending it to people in the refugee camp using Bluetooth. Like I didn't have internet, I cannot upload it on up uh, on App Store, not App Store, on Google Play, right? Because most of us don't have Android, Android. Yeah. You, know, you know, Android. We only have Android. So what happened was I keep on sending it using um, Bluetooth to, to 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 kids, right? And then one day it was at night. I was around maybe nine p.m. I was like, hey. Let me just, that's actually the most craziest idea of all time. I was like, let me upload the APK. So the APK is the package that you actually use, like it's an app. Okay. Then you open it and then you can install it, right? So I'm saying, let me upload the whole APK of the game, the Android package. Let me upload it on my, on, on my Facebook page. You mm-hmm. see how you upload a, uh, a picture? Yeah. I, that's what I use. Okay. That I uploaded and then I said, hey, I made a game. Check it out. Okay. So, and then people were sharing then, that on I Facebook. I woke up in the morning, it was crazy. So people had shared that Yeah, post. I checked. Like, boop, 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 boop. Oh and then, and then, yeah, and then, and then, and then I started like, getting emails from Germany. How many people? It was a lot. I think we had, we have over like 300,000. Wow. Yeah, so yeah. that's when the hot boys started yeah, messaging yeah, you. Like, yeah, who's this kid? Yeah. What makes it to where somebody couldn't have just stolen that and posted it themselves? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, Cause I I not incorporated, right? By that moment, but it, it came from like when I when I I had like a so when you install the game, right? And then you have I have like the, the credential under it. Okay. So that kind of helped me a little. Like bit. a copyright yeah, situation. Yeah, copyright situation. Okay. Like I am made by this, so that kind of helped me a lot. Okay, so someone mm-hmm. from Germany reached out to you. Yeah. People from South Africa. Yeah. Was this yeah. were these like game? The game industry, yeah. Most Industries. folks in the game industry, they were like, hey, man, like, I love the idea. And oh, my like, God, I feel so happy for you. Yeah. Then, yeah. Then, uh, then, um, were you busy. like, mom, oh, my God. Not at all. No? No. No, I was just like, <laughs> not at all. I was just like, wow, what is this? Like, And then the next, after three days, I went to South Africa. They flew you to South Africa. Yeah, yeah. Like that. Were, were they like, what's your number? Let me call you right now. Yeah, mostly like emails. I get my emails out, and then I went to uh, I went to Uganda to get my pass, uh, my my visa and stuff like that. Then went to uh, went to South Africa, and then that kind of changed a lot. From there, like I met people that believe in me. So did you have your Ugandan passport? Nope. And you got it in three days. Nope. I have my, my social media passport. Oh, okay. Okay. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So when you went to South Africa, what were they trying to say? Yeah. So I was giving a talk. I went to a conference. Okay. Yeah. And then I was like giving a talk how I designed the game. I was like, like it was yeah, so funny. That's yeah. It was such so like funny. an inspirational. Yeah. And then I started meeting my How old were you at this point? I don't know. It was 2016. I don't know. 2016. Like, yeah. Like, September 2016. That was, I was maybe like 20. You were born in 93. Yep. So, so in 2013, yeah. you would have been 20. Yep. So you were like 23. Around that time, yes. Yeah. Did you have a girlfriend? <laughs> uh, okay, that was a good one, actually. Yeah, so we, you know, in a refugee camp, you know, you talk with people. You meet yeah, people, of course. You know, I mean, people. listen, yes or no? Yeah, right? <laughs> yes or no? Uh, at that time, let me say, yes, I, I did. You had a girlfriend. But, so... It wasn't like an official, like someone I was dating. Like, it was a boo thing. Yeah. <laughs> a little boo boo on the side. <laughs> yeah, that's time, yeah. So were you like, when you hit it off mm. and had to go to South Africa, were you like, baby, do you want to come with me? I don't know. It wasn't that. I, it was so, there are two ways of things. So there's a, and that's what I like. Uh, so when it comes to social needs time of dating, right? So mm-hmm. the dating scene is not like how it is in America. So there's only one thing. You, you get married, that's it. Okay. Right, but if, <laughs> if if you're seeing somebody, right, of course, like sometimes it might be like your girlfriend, but sometimes you it's, know, just maybe, it's just not serious. Yeah. So yeah, by that time, I how do you married. know that things are getting serious with a Sudanese a Sudanese man? Uh, meeting your friends, introducing you to your family. Okay, and friends and then family. And then family, especially the friends are like your girlfriends, like your friends okay. are very close. Like it's it's yeah, our marriage uh, process is, is a lot. Yeah, it's a, lot. it's a lot. Yeah, but it's 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 beautiful. It's just a lot. Okay, are you Muslim or Christian? I'm a Christian. Yeah, Christian. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. okay, awesome. So, I was just wondering about your girlfriend. Like, if yeah, you yeah, took yeah, anyone yeah, with yeah, you, yeah. did you go to at South Africa with your parents or so, anyone, or just by yourself? So, so when I, I went to South Africa by myself, okay, I, I was there for a couple of. Uh, I went there for like five days and then came back to the refugee camp and then went back again for like two months. 
Wow. Because you were probably like, man, screw this. Like, I'm out of here. Bye. So when I went back to to when I went to South Africa, like Johannesburg, I was I was going for a conference. And then in the conference, I met incredible people. Like, hey, you know, we want want you to come back. We want to teach you how to like start your own business. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, screw it. So I went back. That was September, and then went back to um. Out of South Africa, and that 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 helped me a lot. Yeah. When I go back about two months, it helped me to understand like what the game industry like, you know, building your business. That's like, literally you know, like yeah. overnight life change. It was. I couldn't even believe. It. Like yeah, yeah like yeah. one moment you mm-hmm. were saying it's difficult to even afford to go into town, yep. mm-hmm. and then the next moment you're like on the a plane, like a long time. yeah, on first the way flight. to South oh, Africa. Africa. That, was, that was insane. Hey, did they fly you first class? <laughs> I think I was in the main cabin. I know that. <laughs> okay, it's a little something. <laughs> so, what was your initial like reaction? Did you go to Jayburg or Cape Town? I went to Jayburg. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I, yeah. I flew direct. I flew to uh, from from uh, Entebbe to uh, to Ethiopia, and I'm from Ethiopia to South Africa. What was your first like initial reaction to South Africa? Like, I felt like I wasn't in Africa. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's like, fair. You know, yeah. saying like, I, 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 so before I went because I had good thing about South Africa, especially with the World Cup. Yeah. Right. Like, like you know, the World Cup in 2010. You know, it was, yeah. It was like I'm a big. I was a big. Um, uh, soccer fan, you know, like football fan then and then when I went there I was like, wow, like it's as nice as it yeah, was. Like, like I feel like yeah. wow this and that was the reason. So when I that was the reason when I after South Africa and then I came to the US twenty seventeen after that. How um, was like your language? Were you a strong English speaker? No no as I said before, like I started learning English recently. And so I, by the time I was going there, I started like, you know, how are you doing? Like, was it like the basics? Like, yeah, the basic, like, how are you doing? I'm good. Like, and that's why I was really so nervous when I was giving a talk. Uh, I was just having a, um, one hour interview with um, Susan Sweeney on, uh, on, on, uh, on uh, C-SPAN. And then it was like a one hour, whole hour. And then when she was interviewing me, you know what she did? She played a video that I was on the stage for the first time when I was in South Africa. I don't know how she got that video. I'm sure you looked at it like, oh my God, that was so long ago. And I look at it on the screen, I was like, who is that? Like, that's crazy. Like, that was like, I was like, wow, the way I was like speaking English. Like, it was just like, wow. Like, yeah. Like, like. So let's talk money. What, What money were they trying to offer you? Were they like, yo, can we buy this game? Like, or... Were they just trying to like mentor you into making more games for them? Like, what was the point in these companies? What were they trying to come at you for? Yeah, apart from uh, Facebook gaming, I will offer me money. The rest were just more like, uh, we love the idea. Like, what can you bring into the industry? And that's why I ended up, you know, uh, winning the Global Gaming Citizen, you know, with uh, the Game Award. Because I think that. I brought a new perspective into the industry mm. that was not there before, right? Uh, using game to, to to it's more than just like a serious game, right? Yeah, yeah. It's about like okay, what can we do to use game as part of storytelling, right? And mm. they're very powerful. Games yeah. are game like to me like games are like I remember like even with that idea a lot alone. I remember like um, when there was a shooting in Florida, right? Um, like Trayvon Martin, yeah, like, it's, like the, the shooting, you know, like stuff like that. People start blaming video games, right? Like, hey, then Joe Biden talked about it, and and immediately, you know, what was trending was like, hey, games are not like that. Look at what world is doing, yeah. went viral, you know what I'm saying? So, it's 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 to me by that time, I was trying to see, like, okay, what can I use to turn this not just the whole industry, it's like use this medium as a tool of change, yeah, right? And and that's the most important thing. And and that kind of like helped me a lot to like have amazing people in my life, people in the industry, and just talking to them. Right? Yeah. And say, okay, this is what we can do. From that simple game, I'm working on a bigger one right, right now, right? Salam so, you means know, peace. peace, right? Yeah. From yeah. that simple game that I made in Refugee Camp, I'm working yeah. on more games now. More, I'm, I'm working on the same game to like, because we have the money now, I can invest the money into making something bigger. So the most important thing it was an idea that I actually. Love, yeah, right, and I feel like it's something that I, I can bring to the world, right? Yeah, yeah, I love that. 
Um, so did you sell your game to Facebook? I did not end up selling. Because many uh, yeah. would have. Yeah, I think, yeah. I can you not. say how much they were offering you? I cannot, don't? I cannot, but they, it was good money. But actually, <laughs> How I, good I, though? Like, I, okay, I, I, are we talking six figures, five figures, seven figures? It was in millions, actually. In the millions? Yeah. And you said no. Yeah. I yeah. might have said that. Okay, no, no, I think, I think the, you know, the best part of it was uh, by the time my game went viral, my good friend, who actually I didn't know him before, so he was in the NBA. So he reached out to me and became one of my mentors. Well, no. Don't do it. Don't do it because I want you to. He became your friend after. Yep, yep. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. After, like, yeah. Now we're like, you know, he's one of my first investors in my company. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think he kind of helped me in terms of like, don't rush into it. Okay. Heal yourself. But, yeah. You know, like, it, feel about Even sometimes I feel it's, being an entrepreneur is not easy. Mm -hmm. You have up days and, and down days. You know, there's like down, up, uh, everything, like every, stuff like that. But the best part about it is the journey. Yeah. You know, like, you know, oh, like if someone just come and splash you with money and you don't know how you get that money and you didn't work for it, it's going to go back the same. Yeah. You know, so that, so that kind of like helped me a lot. Yeah. What was your mom's reaction when you're like, yo, mom, Facebook just offered this girl? Was she like, she ah! couldn't do that. Actually, my mom actually doesn't know what I'm doing right now. She's not aware. She, she's like, yeah, okay, good luck. Apart from the time, be I, blessed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> apart from like, uh, apart from me getting to my house in Canada. So how did that happen? Family. So like, yeah, so I how did you get your family? For the most part, is your whole immediate family off of the refugee camp right now? Yep. So you started making money, mm -hmm. um, and why Canada? Why did you choose Canada for them to go to? <laughs> You didn't want to like buy them a nice house in Uganda. No, I, yeah, that's actually a very good question, actually. So I think I love Africa so much. Yeah. And we, we grew up in Uganda in a way that I feel like for me to continue, not just to be successful, but to continue to, to focus on myself, I wanted my family to be in a space where I don't think about them in terms of like, oh, they're getting sick. Uh, the, the the medication is not good. Safety. You know, you see what I'm saying? Safety and all of those things. Yeah. And that's why, like, when I came to America in 20, I think 2018, around there, right? It took me two years, right? Just I'm like, oh, this time I'm working hard. I never had, like, gear or nothing. I never dreamed in my life, <laughs> right? I was just focusing on two years. Yeah. And then when I got the money, I'm like, okay, now, let me focus on my family, get them from Uganda. Yeah. To Canada, whereby my mom is getting old. But my why not getting... America? Yeah, um, I, I'm sorry to use this word, but I don't. <laughs> this <laughs> is America. a safe. No, this so, is a safe space. Yeah, so I love America, right? Yeah. I feel to myself, I feel America is is, is good for the, for someone like me who's young. Has because it also like it challenges you, mm -hmm. and that's why I never want to go to like maybe somewhere in Canada because it, it would be like a comfort zone for me. Too boring. Too boring. I can I can afford anything I want to. Yeah. But in America, it's more like putting a challenge, like, oh, damn. The struggle you know, ignites you. Yeah, it ignites me. I love yeah. that so much. Dang, you don't think you could have found somewhere chill for your mom here? Uh, not, 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 not in America. You know, first of all, <laughs> the, uh, first of all uh, the health system is broken. Yeah, right? it is. Yeah. Like, it's not friendly. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm telling you, it's not good. Even, like, if the most part of it during the pandemic, my dad was so sick. God right? Nice. Yeah. And... And for him to be in Canada, that saved his life, mm, right? Yeah. So I was, I was thinking ahead of, in terms of like, okay, why not? You know, why? why so why did not you have fine? to take like the, to get? Because at this time, you're still a Ugandan passport holder, a Sudanese passport holder right, in America right now. No, when you bought the property in Canada. Uh, yeah, I'm still a uh, uh, South Sudanese. Uh, so. so in order to get your mom because i'm just thinking like visa wise because you okay. know everyone wishes that they could just like oh i'm done with this refugee camp yeah. like off to canada like uh, what did you need, that, that's why you need money yeah, yeah you gotta have money <laughs> yeah. exactly so like yeah. what did you have to prove to canada for them to like let your family go there so that was that's a really good question so what happened to me was uh i was really very lucky you know i remember in 20 uh uh so 20, 2019 march during uh the the white house correspondent dinner so I was invited to the White House course. You're just living. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, so I was invited there. Like... And, then, and then on that table, I had Canadian or, uh, officials that actually visited for that. Mm. So we started talking, you know what I'm saying? And then like, I got the number. And then 
I actually got my family a green card mm. when they actually were in a refugee camp, permanent resident for, for Canada, when wow. they were actually still in a refugee camp. So they didn't even have to do the visa, no, visit, no, no. tourist, straight I called my permanent mom, residency. I called my mom five days before they fly to Canada. She couldn't believe. I would, I know she was yeah. like probably crying. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What's, what's going? I'm like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? She couldn't even believe. Wow. So within that yeah. time, you like bought yeah. them a home yeah. and, and like yeah. get settled. Yeah. And then they went there. I remember that's nice. You're like the home team hero. Yeah. That's I mean, weird. I, I love my family. I think yeah. uh, my my brothers actually very smarter than me. Very nice. Really? People. Yeah. Very, very. My my younger brother played football. The other one is entrepreneur. He just actually got married. My youngest. So, but it's still like, yes. Yeah. That's weird. But yeah, anyway. So uh, what was uh, their first like reaction to being in Canada? Like, did you, cause I know at this point you're in America working. Did yes. you kind of like ease them into Canada a little or stay yes. with them? Like, yeah, so I eased them. And then the best part of it as well was during the time when my mom reunited with her sister for the first time in 30 years. In Canada? In Canada. Your sister, how did her sister get to Canada? Uh, because that was like, there was a refugee resettlement. That was like 1994. Oh my God. You know, so, <laughs> that's so, crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. So, so she I, ended up in Canada. She ended up in Canada. And she had probably been looking for your mom for the yeah, longest. Long time, long time. And she used to talk to us when we were back in Canada. You know? Stop. So, yeah. So, so that kind of helped a lot because she has a sister there. Yeah. They're like maybe one hour away from each other. So that kind of, and then I also took them there during the summer. Yeah. So it wasn't just in the winter. That's sweet. Have your parents come to America? Not yet. Okay. They, yeah. So they were about like my mom was actually about to come here in 2020, and then they kind of she was gonna meet meet with uh, Mark actually Mark Zuckerberg uh, in 2020, and then the whole pandemic flew. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, they will they will visit some sometime. I love that. So what type of work does your mom do now in Canada and your dad? Um, I don't. Uh, they take care of my nieces. And, you uh, retired your parents. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Think, yeah, God think, is good. Yeah, yes. I think uh, my nieces. I love my nieces. Very, I love that. Yeah, like yeah, and then um, they're yeah. like in public school. Yes, right and now doing all yeah, that. They like their kids. Uh, yeah, they're very like, in public school. The school is actually like very near to them. So, so you yeah. literally like change your whole life overnight. I mean, it's it's God. I mean, so I think, yeah, I, I, that I mean, is wild. Really, oh, yeah. What culture shock do you experience? Because you're really like far out yeah i think there's a lot when i first came to america actually there's a lot of things that i'm that i'm still like facing right now give me your top three like wow is this real life like experiences like weird culture shock experiences i can give you only two or one maybe <laughs> i need at least two i need at least two oh uh, really so i think so um sharing people don't share here yeah. no sharing is not sharing it is not. I think. I think in where I where I grew up, right? It's, it's more like a culture. Yeah. But I think that even if we didn't have enough, we look at each other, mm. if you, and that and that actually like that help us a lot to actually have more life strength. Yeah. You know. So, second is that is how do you say it? like it's going to be almost the same. I I, I would say that. Um, about it. Yeah, like people, like for example, where I'm living right now, I don't even know who my neighbor is. Yeah, the streets and, are empty here. Yeah, it's like you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah. and in in, in 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 when when I was growing up in a, in a refugee camp, I know everybody. Yeah. Right. So, which is good because it's a different you know culture and stuff. It's a real community. Yeah, like it's real community. So, community yeah. is a big it's a, it's a big problem in America. I was talking about that actually yeah. on my story today, yeah. and I said that. I get like homesick for African countries mm -hmm. here because mm -hmm. the streets, it's different because you live in DC, yeah, but like mm -hmm. imagine where I live in Woodbridge, like the streets are so empty. Wow. Yeah. Like, you know, you're used to like in a lot of African countries, yeah. even if it's not like Kampala, yeah, 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 even yeah. in just a normal yeah. city, yeah. people are walking yeah, around, yeah. people are outside. Yeah. Hi, hello, market lady, like That's here, exactly. you, you can go days without seeing anybody on the street, yeah. unless it's a homeless person begging for money. And, and the worst part of it is even like, for you to leave 
in a neighborhood and you don't know who is there. Yeah. Right. You, anything can happen. You don't know who's beside you. Yeah. It can yeah, be a pedophile over there. there. Yeah. yeah. I don't know who knows it. So I it's think true. Yeah, it's, it's a big cultural shock. It is. That is kind of a culture shock. Mm -hmm. um, did you have like friends that you left behind who could still kind of reach out to you or like? Yeah, it's been us. Uh, so nowadays, so when I first, nowadays, I'm actually talking with most of them. Uh, before about like a year ago, like I didn't have, I wasn't close with a lot of my, one of my friends because I was too busy, right? Yeah. And yeah. But I think now I have more, I'm like, I don't know, I'm more settled now mm -hmm. in a way that whereby I don't care about like, you know, like what I'm doing, right? And yeah. I'm just more like making yeah, time, making time for people because those people count so much. There are some of them that we play soccer together. Yeah. Some of them like, oh, they like, oh my God, them. bring you me. Know, you know, see, you know, like, because of where I am, yeah. they might feel like, oh, just because of me, just when like, but I build amazing memories with them, and any memory I can do, some of us get Yeah. Them. So, exactly. so I'm, I'm, I'm in that space now where I can just go back and just like talk to them and so on. Right? Yeah. And so you have your own company. Yeah. What's it called? You know, games. Do not games. Yeah. Okay. And what is your like long term goal with integrating that back into Africa though? Yeah, it's been and that's uh I think the game industry in Africa right now is, is really is growing so much in a way that we actually gonna have the, the biggest in game industry apart from Asia. Really? Yeah, I think so. Like we're gonna we're gonna like have I think we just have to and that's we just have to have more designers, creative, like, you know, you know, game, everything. I think the industry itself is going to be big in Africa in the next 10 years. Yeah. And uh, to me, I just want to keep on growing my business and learn. But at some point, at the end of the day, I don't think that I'm going to have that company for a long time. Why? Because, uh, like, every single time our perspective change and our, our mm -hmm. career change, as I started the conversation before, I'm happy that I'm a game designer. I'm happy that I own a video game company, but I want to start making movies. Movies, okay. Yeah, like I feel like uh, that's my dream job. I really? want, I want to be a movie director because I feel like when I was growing I up, love that. yeah, it's because when I when I grew up, that's the original up, passion. Yeah, like when I was growing up, mm -hmm. I feel like. I've seen a lot of stories. I've seen a lot of things that happen in life, so I want to tell them those. What makes stories. you feel like you can't do both? Uh, it's, it's time. <laughs> time. Time. Then we're getting old now, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you're not getting old. <laughs> yeah. You're only 29, you know, please. Um, what yeah. opportunities? Well, first of all, when I was on your website, you said something about what was your slogan? It was like, talent in Africa is not like, it's not a lack of talent, it's a lack of opportunity. Yes. Repeat that back to me. It's on your website page. Yeah. Uh, talent is evenly distributed, but opportunity, uh, opportunities are not. Exactly. Talent yeah. is evenly distributed, but opportunities are not. Yeah. What do you do, do you think, to like give opportunities to like another a little like Lul somewhere mm -hmm. at a refugee camp? I feel like we have about seven, seven to five million refugees around the world, right? And, 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 and when I say that talent is evenly distributed and opportunity is not, you just look back on my story, first of all, right? I not even just look back. It's like it doesn't matter where you are. There's always talent, right? There's mm -hmm. always there's, you will do every like as I was sharing with you, like how I used to make movies out of yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like how I used to cut all the cartoons, everything that is talent itself, right? Yeah. And I'm in DC right now, and you think about like. Some of them is in the southwest, right? Some of them never actually seen where the White House is, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I would say the best way to do that is just, I wish we live in a world where empathy is actually supposed to be teach. Yeah. Right? So we make policies mm -hmm. to people that that we actually don't know who they are. Yeah. Right? Faceless. You know, you know, it's crazy, right? Yeah. If my mom did not actually invest in me, right, which is an opportunity. She saw the, she saw the talent and she invested in me. It wasn't somebody from America that invested in me. It was somebody within that same household that we actually don't have enough food together, but she, she was able to see the talent and do everything to invest yeah. in me. Right? A mother spirit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think the best way to do it is just like, just our society to just invest in people no matter where they are and just give them the opportunities, give, give them, them the, the resources. Yeah, just give them the resources. You know? When is the last time you went back to Uganda? Uh, 2019. 2019. 2019. Yeah. 
before the pandemic. Okay. Yeah. And what was that like for you? Having been gone, like, I, in a different I lifestyle. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, so uh, I couldn't believe it. I remember, like, going back and, um, so when I, when I was in a refugee camp, we love, like, seeing girls, like, Andy Ginzo, like, they were cool and uh, they were wine. And they would just go to a small town that we live in. And then every time they come there, like, we run out to the cars. Yeah. You know, every time, hey, you know, Eddie Gaines is coming in town, they would just run. And then when I went back, I'm just hanging out with him. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm just hanging out with people that I, wow. Were people, like, chasing you? Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, yeah. yeah I, mean, I, I went back in a better, not a lot of people knew I was going back. Yeah. Right? So, um, a lot of people want me to go back to South Sudan, like even the whole, like a lot of people organizing for me to go back, but I don't feel like that's the way I'm supposed to go back to my country. I don't want yeah. it too much. I just want to just go there, chill, and then come back to my home. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's a debatable question because a lot of people, you know how people say it's almost like dangerous for yeah. rappers to leave their hometown and then yeah. go back? Yeah. Like it's almost like an enemy of progress. Yeah. Like, do you feel that way? Do you ever see yourself moving back to Uganda or like setting up shop and home in South Sudan? Or are you like pretty much like that's the past life? No, that that's when me and me were uh, and and that that was that was my that was my biggest inspiration in twenty twenty. Uh, I don't make a lot of money, right? For example, I'm not like I'm not a billionaire or something like that. Right? You're not a billionaire, yeah, but yeah, you yeah, make yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but so that's objective. Process, so, but in the process, I was able to meet amazing people. Yeah, that networking. Big companies, like you know, that, that want to help. Like, I never thought I was gonna start my own foundation. Right? Yeah. And people were like, hey, Ron, hey, yeah, you, you know, big companies, and and I'm like, yeah, actually, that's 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 a cool idea in terms of like, again, you say like, can we make you know, many Luang? If if Luang, if I can invest in them, we can actually have more. And, yeah, and, and and that's why I started my own foundation. Yeah, and uh, big companies are investing in it right now. So, what was that process like? You not being a U.S. citizen? It wasn't bad at all. Um, I was. I think this is a lot of opportunities as long as doing it right. Mm. Legitimately. Know, legitimately, I think that's so. The thing. Are you a perm resident? In the U.S. Yeah. 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 Are you gonna go for citizenship? Uh, no. <laughs> You're just using us and abusing us. No, no. You're trying to love us and leave us. <laughs> I'm gonna leave you. I love, I love, I love the country, but I'm not. You I, want I to settle be. in Canada? Uh, U.S. I love this place. So you're gonna settle here? Yeah, as a permanent resident, but not a. Not a Why? Yeah, I want to be. I want to remain as a South Sudanese citizen. You can be dual. No, I don't like that idea. No. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe. We'll see. Um, is your that? wife in Canada, U.S., or Sudan? Your future wife? Uh, official one. That's a good question. Um, you're gonna be here in the U.S. You want her to be from the U.S. Yeah. Why? Uh, in my, cause um, I want to get to know somebody. So okay. you know, so this is where I live. You're not into long distance. Dating. No, 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 a little bit now. Has your mom? Because I thought like a lot of African cultures, like the mom will kind of be like, "We have someone for you." Mm -hmm. Like, has your mom tried to like? Ah, she always call me sometime and say, "Hey, you know." Who's who's around, you know? Where's but, my grandkids? Yeah, you know same. But at the end of the day, I love my family a lot. They, yeah, they've given me the um, do what you want to do as long as you, you fall in the right fucking life. You know, yeah, that's so that. important thing. And then uh, my, I just told you my younger brother just got married. You know, mm -hmm. so it's it's a lot. It's a lot of pressure for me. But um, so, ladies, yeah. I put on Instagram and I was like, hey, like, what questions do you want me to ask? And most of the questions, swear to God, were like, is he single? <laughs> So, are you single? Yes, right now. You're single? So far. Super single? So far. Um, what are you looking for? What could a woman who wants to slide into your DMs mm. after watching this, what does she kind of need to have? Wow, that's a good question, actually. What is Lowell looking for in a lady? Ambition. Someone who's ambitious. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, mission. Um, I, I just want to make sure, like, you you understand life in terms of like 
I, I was a refugee and then right now I'm, I'm who I am, right? But, okay. but I also want people to understand that life changes every time, mm. right? But the more you, even with all my investors, everybody, each of them is a friend to me, okay. right? So they understand where I'm coming from. So I, I want people or somebody that I'm going to have a long relationship with mm -hmm. to understand that, hey, there's a mission I'm in. Yeah, you're ambitious. You're doing your own thing. I can support you. Like you know, all this stuff. Like yeah, a sometimes. Lady but, nah, but at the end of the day, I'm good, right? I'm good. Yeah, uh, you're you're not looking. <laughs> no, I'm not looking. Why? Right. It takes time. It's it, not something you want it to be it. organic. Yeah, yeah, it takes time. To okay, work. things are organic, you guys. You can hop into the DMs. Yeah. Um, have you been to Kenya before? Yes, I love Kenya. Really? Yeah, actually, like yeah, I I yeah, so I've been to Kenya. Well, like maybe four times actually. Really? Um, yeah. What's your favorite city in Kenya? Nairobi. Really? Okay. Yeah. I, I, love I love Nairobi. Nairobi. Uh, it's actually good. Actually, my favorite part of it is uh, the uh, Airbnb. Okay, the Airbnb. Yeah, really, yeah, really oh, the really views in Nairobi really, really, are like. Yeah, it's like I love it. I love mm, Nairobi. I miss Nairobi so yeah, much. Okay. So when are you going back to Uganda? Um. <laughs> You're gonna have to take me, yeah. Because it was just not giving all the way when I went. It was fun. Kampala yeah. is fun, yeah. but I do see like the you maybe need to know somebody to take you. Yeah, here and here. yeah. That's what I always tell yeah, people, it's yeah. not really like a super tourist friendly place. It's not like Nigeria, whereby you 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 wake up there and then do anything you want. Yeah, no, no, yeah. yeah. I think, I think so, yeah. My dream in Uganda is to go gorilla trekking. Such a good. Yeah, that's uh, one of my so, biggest dreams. So, I, and I always tell people: so when you're in Kampala, right, you have to take a bus, a bus trip to West to West Nile. Yeah, the West of Uganda is amazing. Like it's about eight hours, but like on the way, literally, Sheesh. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you see like gorillas, everything is it's just really good. I would yeah. love to do that. So, so first of all, like what what makes you happy? Like what's what? Uh, I see you have an amazing smile every time. You have an amazing energy. Like, what's, what, what's, tell us. Um, I love talking to people and okay. I love teaching people. Okay. So, like, I started off as a teacher, but I'm realizing that you can educate others without yeah. being in the classroom. Wow. So, I just love, yeah. like, sharing um, information, bridging gaps. Yeah. I know that, like, Black people and children mean a lot to me. Wow. So, my goal is to like create a unity amongst all of us in the diaspora mm -hmm. through like building understanding of each other. So, like, questions about refugee camps that someone mm -hmm. watching this from Anacostia might have. Mm -hmm. Like, I want them to be able to us just learn each other more. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's the best part of it. A lot, a lot of people don't think that, you know, when we tell our story, it doesn't just strengthen us, it put us together. It, it's like, because we're human, like, okay, like, my first thing is like, we might be different, but we're relatable. Yeah, in so exactly. many ways, right? Like this, this that thing that like bring us together. This is exactly. a feeling like that, like, and that's why sometimes, like, if I want to share my story, I'm not just, I'm just, I'm not just selfish. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm here in America. Yeah. I'm good. Like, I'm sharing it in a way that, wow, this might actually bright somebody's day. It's yeah. not bright in my day. I'm already my days are really bright through the, the thing that the experience that you're I through, inspiring. You know, so. Yeah. And even sometimes when I'm telling it, I, I'm not telling it because I feel like, you know, inspiring people. I feel like, yeah, I'm actually feeling better in terms of like, I'm thinking back about what I've been through. And it's every time I'm telling it, it's it strengthening me and make me yeah. feel a little bit. So I think that when you talk about children and, 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 and the people of us, we are the one that own ourselves. Exactly. We have to like, yeah, yeah. So what is like the whole, idea of like diversity inclusion between the diaspora is that something that you're trying to like? yeah um definitely and my biggest mm -hmm. thing is mm -hmm. getting people also comfortable to visit africa mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i want african tourism on the rise mm -hmm. like i love um showing expats who live mm -hmm. in africa okay. now from mm -hmm. other places people like you who have migrated from mm -hmm. africa to here and like just like opening that gap to where we're comfortable going back and forth yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm kind of all over the place right now, but it's a vibe. Everything Africa. Everything, all Africa, <laughs> all, all things black. Oh, okay, what is your favorite artist in Africa? Sure. My favorite artist in Africa is Thames because I think she's so gorgeous and talented. I love her. She's my girl crush. If wow. you're watching this, yeah. call me. Like, I love her. Wow. Yeah. And you watch African movies? I just started getting into Nollywood. Um, it's a stretch for me. Yeah, they are so dramatic. Still, yeah, it's a lot. I was watching this one on Netflix where Jesus caught her on her iPhone, I and I was like, oh my God, I've got to go. This is too much for me. <laughs> like, 
Nollywood is it's good, but we they better. could do better. It's getting better. Yeah, it's, it's, getting, better. it's getting better. Exactly. It's getting better. So I'm excited for that. Um, are you on the way to that African movie production or just movie production? Uh, just movie production. I think, but a lot of my story is going to be based in Africa. I feel like your story would make a really good film. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's let's tell other people's story first. Then like, you should start off with yourself. <laughs> you heard it here first. He needs to start off with himself. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna put his. Um, Instagram, do you have a YouTube? Yeah. Oh, well, man, yeah. yeah, duh, he has a YouTube. Um, I'm going to put his website and everything just in case you guys have anything you want to say or any props you want to give. Thank you guys for watching. Love you all so much. Make sure you leave a comment and questions below and you guys will hear from me soon. That's fine.